uh, the frequencies of people who selected zero at pretreatment and one at pretreatment, so it's 12 and 12. So that's why we have 50 or 50%, 50 and it goes down from there. Now here's the critical piece of information, and you have your test statistic with a Cochrane skew value of 10.17, and that is statistically significant with two degrees of freedom. So it's p equal 0 0.006. So what it, that is saying is that these means or proportions, uh, maybe more accurate to say that they're more proportions or more more related to what we're interested in, these proportions are not equal to each other. We don't know for sure though whether 0 0.50 and 0 0.33 are different from each other or whether 0.33 and 0.13 are different from each other or we would probably assume 0 0.10 and 0 0.13 are different from each other. We can definitely expect that to be significant. And so what you're left here is having to do uh, some post hoc testing in a sense, or some follow up testing, just like you would in a repeated measures ANOVA. Now what a lot of people would do in this case is they would do the Cochrane's Q and then they would follow that up with McNamara chi-square statistics, which are the two comparison equivalent analysis for dichotomously scored data in a within subjects design with just two levels. And you can do that and in SPSS what it's going to do is it's going to apply a Yates correction on your data and it's going to be in my opinion it's too strict and so you're not going to reject the null hypothesis as often as you should. And so what you should do here, what I would recommend that you do is actually follow up with a series of Cochrane's Q statistics. Cochrane's Q was invented as a technique to overcome McNamara chi-square's limitation of just two levels pre-treatment, post-treatment. That's all McNamara could test. It couldn't include the follow-up uh, level in the within subjects factor. But Cochrane's Q works just fine on two levels. Uh, so in a sense, we probably should never do McNamara chi-square. We should always be just doing Cochrane's Q because it's superseded McNamara chi-square because it can handle any number of levels of within subjects fa in the within subjects factor. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to analyze uh, these data to follow up to see where exactly the differences lie. So I can go into non-parametric tests, legacy dialogues. Uh, you can't really see that. So analyze. Uh, it's the same analysis that I'm doing. So k-related samples. And I'm going to look at first uh, pre-treatment and post-treatment. And I'm going to do a Cochrane's Q. And that's totally fine. In fact, if anything, that's what we should be doing. And you'll notice that Cochrane skew doesn't apply a Yates correction, which is another bonus. And it also gives you the chi-square value. So when you do Mac Mac McNamara chi-square in SPSS, it doesn't give you a chi-square value. It just gives you the p-value. And that p-value has been corrected with Yates correction, but the Cochrane skew doesn't. Uh, so we get a, 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 a chi-square value, 2.66 and uh, an asymptotic significance value of 0 0.102. So 0 0.50 versus 0.13 pretreatment versus, versus post-treatment has, has failed to observe uh, a statistically significant decrease in suicidal ideation or tendencies amongst this uh, sample of patients. Now what about post-treatment uh, to uh, follow-up? What about that uh, difference? So let's go. Let's go uh, post treatment and follow up, and click OK. And now I don't have significance here either. So 0.33 versus 0.13 is also not statistically significant. It's nearly so, but it's not there. Finally, I have my last option here, at least in terms of pairwise comparisons. I realize that's coming out of the window, so non-parametric tests, k-related samples. Now I'm going to test my last option here, which is pre-treatment and follow-up. That's the biggest difference numerically, and it's got to be significant because the Cochrane's Q in the first analysis was. So I click on OK, and there's my significant result. So I did the omnibus Cochrane's Q. I got a significant result. 
But as it turned out, the only one that was statistically significant was the difference between pretreatment and follow-up. Suicidal ideation does 